think love makes God stupid. We think love makes God stupid. Just because God loved you don't mean that he's going to give you portions of himself. You ain't been tested it. Wow. Come on. That's good. Okay? How is God your father and he called you to ministry and you can't even do it on time? You can't even do it in excellence. You can't, you can't even submit to being taught. How is God your father? You don't even, you don't even obey him. Examine your works. I ain't just talking about being a good church member. Examine your works to see if they are of the workings of God. Jesus said, "What well, I do what I see my father. Whew. Come on, preacher. I do what I see my father do. So in other words, so in other words, he said, I pattern myself after his example. After his faith. You know, God has a faith, right? Right. Jesus yeah. said, have faith in God. But really, the, the, the original translation is have the God kind of faith. In other words, believe like God believes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The word. Yeah. Okay. Amen. You understand? Believe how God believed. So he was a, he was he was patterning himself after God's faith. Amen. 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 So God, you, what did you gotta understand that God is a God is a businessman. Okay? God is a businessman. He only invests in faithful students. So what you do with your faith and what you do with the faith of the one that he's placed in your life to help to be an example of faith in you determines what he will invest in you and what he will do with you. Amen. Amen. Because if he can't be faithful or whatever, he's not going to give you much. And I find that we want more of God and we can't even handle the little he's given. Don't get it twisted. I want more of you, God. We sing these songs. Set up fire. Down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. But I said, get up four o'clock in the morning to pray. And you still lagging at five o'clock. <laughs> Come on, I say fast one day a week, and you can't even last. I say go and submit to authority, Lord. But I don't like that. That church too small. <laughs> I hear things like, I'm tired of submitting to startup ministries. Oh, Jesus. What kind of pride is that? Jesus. Well, I've heard people say that. But you ain't competent enough to start up when your dog won't sell it. Oh, that that okay, at least that person is stepping out and doing what God told them to do. Yeah. What you doing? That you, that, that, that you uh, 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 start up a ministry. Your dog won't follow you. <laughs> Last one. You, you'll get used to being a minute. It's okay. You'll get used to being a minute. All right. See, 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 God is a businessman. He only invests in faithful stewards. So, again, according to Matthew 25, 23, you can write that down. Matter of fact, you probably need to study that whole chapter. All right. But if you're faithful over little things, God will make you ruler over much, right? So why would God take you on fully as a son or daughter when you are a poor son or daughter in the earth? Why would God do that? Okay? You're not even a good citizen of a kingdom. You're not even a citizen of his kingdom. Why would he make you a son in his dynasty and his lineage? To carry his legacy. See, a lot of the stuff that we do, where do we get it from? Huh? We have people that benefit from our services, and then we have people that are in our line to succeed us. Okay, I'll say that for another day. You will never receive from God what you refuse to honor on the life of a man. I'm telling you what I know. I got scripture to back me up on this. Okay? And, 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 and some may say, well, again, God is my father. God is my father. I don't need no man to follow me. And others say, God is my cover. You heard that before, right? Yeah. God is my covering, and I don't need no man to cover me. Okay? Well, let's look at what Jesus told the apostles, right? Matthew 10. Let's go to Matthew 10, and I'm going to read verses 40 and 41. And if you don't have your Bible, you can just write it down. We'll take mental note of it, okay? Here's what it says. And this is what Jesus told the apostles. He said, what? He that receiveth you, receiveth me. You see that? You see that? 
He that receiveth you receiveth me. Right? And, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Wow. Okay. He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet, or proper translation says, because he is a prophet. So he that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. All right, so here it is. You got Jesus telling these human beings. Okay, Jesus, he's all, he's all man and he's all God, right? Second member of the Godhead. He said, listen, he's telling his human apostles who he is anointed and set aside for service. He said, listen, I'm going to send you out. And he that receives you, they're receiving me. And if they're receiving me, they're receiving him who sent me, being God the Father. Amen. Amen. See, you just think he's about a man or a woman. You understand? You're just thinking about a man or a woman. But this thing is really about Jesus. Amen. This thing is about God. You understand what I'm saying to you? And we get we we keep getting tripped up on humanity. Okay, humanity does not cancel out a person's divinity. In other words, just because you're a man or a woman, because you're human, don't mean you don't have an anointing and an assignment. Okay, this is can, can, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? A person's flaws don't cancel out their anointing and their assignment. That's good news. That's why you should give a little more grace to your leaders. Yeah. You should show a little more mercy to your leaders. Yeah. Uh, you understand? You will never know the pressures that they're under unless you sit in their seat. Yeah. And I find that we like to judge seats we don't sit in. Yeah. The main people try to tell the pastors and apostles and leaders what to do are the main ones who don't sit in their seat. Okay. You don't understand the pressures they're under? You don't know the pressures they're receiving from God? You understand what I'm saying to you? Teaching. Okay. Well, you know, a leader messed up in certain things a leader shouldn't do. Certain things a believer should do. God used flawed people all throughout Scripture. I'm not justifying sins of flaws. I'm just saying God used flawed people. Abraham had a lying issue, especially when it came to self-preservation. Still was a lie. Okay. Okay. Moses had issues. Come on now. Joshua had issues. And we were going to judges. Okay? David had issues. Solomon definitely had issues. Okay, we're not going to get on Solomon tonight. Bless God. Peter had issues. Okay? Even Paul made mistakes and had issues. Okay? God uses flawed people. He gave more glory out of flawed people. Amen. Can I say that again? He gets more glory out of flawed people. All right. So all so so us so all y'all who better your pastor when they make a mistake, you wouldn't give them a chance to repent. You would see it. Uh oh. And a hush fell over the crowd. Okay. You will not receive the reward of an office you dishonor. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. It's right there. You will not receive a father's reward if you dishonor a father in office. Amen. What are things that a father gives? Fathers give identity. A lot of y'all don't even know who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh, I'm a child of God. You're more than that. Come on. Yeah. Some some people they just grow accustomed to going to church going to work, coming home, and repeating the same thing. That sounds very boring to me. <laughs> right? But there are depths of God. There are depths in God. Come on, yeah. You understand what I'm saying yeah. to you? There are depths in God. Okay, if you're bored with your Christianity, you're bored with your walk with God, baby, you are shallow. Right? Ah. right? And, and, and what a father, and what a real father does, that's how, that's how I know some of these leaders are not fathers, just because you're a leader don't make you a father. Amen. Oh, let me just stop right there. Let, let me talk right there. Just because someone is a leader don't mean that they are a father. You know, you can be a great leader and a terrible father. I'm talking about spiritual father, right? 
Okay? You can be a great general. You can be good at leading on the battlefield. Strategic planning for war and stuff like that. And so come home and be just dysfunctional. Come on. Those of y'all who had military parents know what I'm talking about. Some of them came back in their right mind, but some of them didn't. And they were dysfunctional. All right? Or they did all kind of crazy stuff to cope. And then that took away from their parenting. Believe me, I know people who had military parents. And mm -hmm. amen. I'm going to just leave it like that. Uh -uh. But they was good in the military. They were excellent in the military. Because, see, when it comes to fathering, that's a certain grace. You understand? And I don't got too much time to really get deep into that. But what fathers give, fathers give identity, they prepare you for life. So if real spiritual fathers prepare you for the kingdom. They'll just prepare you for church. Come on. And a lot of you are taught how to be good Sunday members and how to be good members in the house of God. But they're not preparing you to be in the dynasty of God. Yeah. 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 Revelate. Uh, Revelate. And that's why, and that's why there's only certain things that God can entrust you with. Wow. You know, God love everybody and don't trust everybody. I know that's right. Yeah. That's right. Don't you love people you don't trust? Yeah. yeah. All the time. You love your brother, but you don't hear thieves. <laughs> okay. And you wouldn't let him in your house. Or oh, if you did let him in your house, you would watch every move he made. <laughs> so why do we think God is any different? God promotes those that he's tested. And he trusts those that he's tested and those who have passed the test. There are levels and facets in God. Don't you know everybody not a child of God? See, see you can be a citizen of the kingdom but not a son of the king. There's levels to this. See, we teach that it's all the same. But when you really begin to study the scriptures, okay, and really begin to get understanding, you begin to realize, like, there's different facets of this. Because there's a difference between being born again and being born of God. Those are two different births. First, uh, uh, John 3 talks about being born again. First John 3 talks about being born of God. And if you read the requirements of being born of God, you a lot, a lot of people ain't born of God yet. <laughs> And, and it says, it's, it says you got a master love. Amen. Glory to God. Some of us, we can't even restore our enemies. <laughs> Woo can't restore our enemies, okay? We, we can't even, we still struggle with loving our enemies. Bless God. Bless God. And then it talks about uh, uh, sin no longer being in you. Period. And only the seed of God remaining in you. Okay? A lot of us got all kind of other seeds along with the seed of God, and that's why we fight and wrestle. That's why a lot of you are wrestling with the will of God right now. You're wrestling with the will of God right now because you got two seeds warring in you. You got Adam seed and Christ seed warring in you. Huh? And, 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 and what real fathering does is it begins to extract that stuff up out of you. It don't just prepare you for church. It don't just prepare you for ministry. It prepares you for kingdom and eternity. And I ain't just talking about just going to heaven. I'm talking about what you're going to be when you get to heaven. Oh, yeah. <sighs> want, am I going too deep for them? Bring it. God, I can go real deep with that thing. This time I, got I, I can go real deep with that thing. Because how many know that when you go to heaven, you're not going to just be sitting around twirling your thumbs? Come on. Right. 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 Okay. You want to know what heaven looks like? Look around in the earth. And just imagine that upgraded a thousand times more. That's what heaven gonna look like. And guess what? Like, you got a job down here, you got a job up there. So a lot of us think that when we get to heaven, we just gonna be worshiping, worshiping around the throne all day. And listen, as much as I love Jesus, he's my everything. I love me some Jesus. But that gets boring. After a while. That's when you get born. Why would God give you a house or a mansion you can't even enjoy? I know that's right. See, we think so shallow of God. Because we conform God to what we do in church. We sing songs every day gonna be like Sunday. Really? You ain't gonna have no chance to do nothing. 
<laughs> you know, there will be appointed times of worship, but guess what? There's, there's, there's a lot of stuff to explore in heaven. You understand that? So, so heaven is bigger than what you can imagine. All right? So real fathering, okay, real apostolic fathering prepares you for these eternal truths and realities. All right? And uh, this is why I believe that God has raised up this office for this time. We have many that claim the office, and just because you did a great work don't mean you're a father. You might be a general, you're not a father. And then some of these folks are not generals. Okay, I'll leave that alone. Because I can chase that rabbit all night. But listen, I'm trying to get you to understand the value of these things on the earth. Because you cannot... According to this scripture here, according to Matthew 10, 40, 41, I just read, you cannot reject a kingdom official on earth and expect to be received by God in heaven. A lot of y'all are waiting on God, but God sent you some God sent you somebody with the answer. And you won't align with them. You understand what I'm saying? You will not, because you may not like how they packaged. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know how many people have overlooked us when we package right? Yes. Because we don't wear the collars and the robes and stuff. Okay, that's God. Amen. And I, I, we got a spiritual son. You know, he's a bishop. You know, he, he wears that stuff from time to time. I don't wear it. I don't wear it. I think I preached the collar once. Amen. It's hot. <laughs> Amen. This stuff is hot. Okay, I'm still praying. We, we doing an ordination later on this year, and I'm still trying to I'm, I'm still trying to pray and find out what God wants us to wear. Okay, because I don't want to wear all of that. You got the three layers of robe. What do you call it? Choir dress. Yeah, you look like you're the glorified choir too. Amen. And some of them have the purple and the red on at the same time. I'm like, what is that? But anyway, I I know they need different things, but but listen. You cannot reject an official on earth and expect to be received by God. It's royal protocol for a monarch to send an ambassador. We got to realize God is royal. We make him churchy. God is royal. He's royal before he's churchy. Come on. Don't you know the king, the kingdom comes before the priesthood? Amen. We are a kingdom of priests, not a priest of kingdom. God has made us kings and priests, not priests and kings. You see the ranking of words? Right. The kingdom part comes first. But we've been taught only the ecclesiastical part of ministry and the priesthood with God. Okay. No one of them got no power. Well, how do you think the disciples cast out demons and heal the sick? Okay, but prior to even receiving the Holy Ghost. Because he taught them their identity in the kingdom first. Yeah. And then he gave them the Holy Ghost. See, we, we disciple backwards. Okay, you understand? So, a monarch sends an ambassador or representative ahead of them before they come in person. Because remember, the way of the Lord has to be prepared. Yes. John the Baptist came to prepare the way of the Lord. He came to prepare the way for Jesus, right? And many are being cut off. I know this is a hard word tonight, but it's okay. Many are being cut off from parts of God, parts of God. I ain't saying God in totality, but many are being cut off from parts of God because they refuse that part of God that's represented in the earth. Come on. Wow. It's tight, preacher. Huh? You understand? I remember when, uh, when uh, 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 the parable of, of, uh, of the rich man and Lazarus, you know, the, the, the rich man and Lazarus, you know, Lazarus, Lazarus was a poor man and Lazarus and the rich man both died, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, 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 Lazarus was over there in Abraham's bosom. Okay, the rich man was in hell. Mm -hmm. And he said, Father Abraham, have Lazarus to come dip his finger in some water, put it on my tongue. And of course, he couldn't do it. And he said, you know, uh, 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 you know, you know, Lord, let me out of this place so that... Uh, you know, I can tell my family members not to come here. It was like they have the law of the prophets. They already have people that I've sent. They already have people that I've sent. 
and that they have ignored. Certain things God ain't gonna keep repeating himself because he already sent somebody to tell you. Come on. Okay. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So if you don't receive a father that God sends you, then you won't get the full rewards of that office. And God is not going to give you the full rewards of that office that comes from him. He'll be your king. He'll be your Lord. He may even be your God. Okay? But is he your father? Because father is the highest dimension of God. And if it's the highest dimension of God, it's the highest dimension of ministry. Okay?